Hello, you're watching GMT on BBC World News. Our top stories. Arab countries engaged in a major dispute with Qatar are meeting to discuss their next moves. They've accused Doha of destabilizing the region and providing a haven for extremism. Claims denied by Qatar. The Saudis themselves are being accused of promoting extremism here in the UK. The Saudi embassy in London says the claims are categorically false. War cannot be ruled out. The US issues a stark warning to North Korea after it conducts this intercontinental missile test. And does the presence of rescue boats in the Mediterranean actively encourage people to make the dangerous journey to Europe? We hear both sides of the debate in southern Italy. Welcome to GMT, I'm Lucy Hawkins. We start the programme with the biggest crisis facing Gulf countries for decades. Foreign ministers from several Gulf countries are in Cairo. They're there to discuss possible further sanctions on Qatar. Egypt, Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates and Bahrain severed ties with the country four weeks ago, accusing it of supporting extremism. The Arab nations now demanding that Qatar, amongst other things, shuts down the international broadcaster Al Jazeera. They also want Qatar to scale back its ties with Iran. Qatar strongly denies supporting extremism and says this list of demands, these are just some of them, are not realistic. Well, joining me now from Cairo is Hugh Miles. He is the editor of ArabDigest.org, also the author of the book Al Jazeera, How Arab TV News Challenged the World. Good to have you with us. What do you see coming out of today's meeting in Cairo? Well, it looks like they are not going to reach any agreement with Qatar. The demands they've made are very maximalist. The Guthries have refused them point blank. So we expect to see uh, an escalation of sanctions. What kind of sanctions, Hugh? Well, uh, one thing that could happen is Qatar could be officially booted out of the GCC, the Gulf Cooperation Council. Um, already this dispute has basically destroyed the GCC for the foreseeable future, but Quexit could be official. Uh, another thing they could do is they could make the outside world choose between doing business with Qatar and doing business with the Saudi bloc, if you like. Uh, so this would affect particularly countries in Asia like Japan and India, uh, which import a lot of Arab uh, energy, oil and gas. They would be in an even more difficult position than they are now. Yeah, huge implications if that happened. Hugh, I wonder if there is any talk of a compromise, perhaps coming from the Kuwaitis, and what that compromise could be? Well, at the moment, there, there can be no compromise, because they both said they won't. They've got this very extreme uh, list of demands. Uh, the Guthrie's have said that there's no possibility they're going to meet, meet that. So uh, there is no room for compromise, and this is the problem. There's no way of de-escalating this. There's no off-ramp. Um, and it's rather reminiscent of the Yemen war, which was another Saudi policy, which was opened uh, rather recklessly and has led to disaster. And there seems to be no way out. Hugh, give us an idea of the mood when you speak to people in Qatar and also the mood at Al Jazeera. Uh, well, I haven't personally spoken to anybody working at Al Jazeera, but I know that they are very defiant and so are the Guthries because they believe that they're on the right side of history. I mean, the way they see it, that Al Jazeera's view of the future in the Middle East, which is that sooner or later, Islamist groups like the Muslim Brotherhood and Hamas are going to come to power across the whole region, either through democratic elections or through revolution, is uh, realistic. And this is likely. This is what Qatar believes, and this is what Al Jazeera believes. And, and it's a reasonable thing to say, because you know, on the few occasions when Sunni Arab countries have been allowed to hold free and fair elections, Islamic groups like the Muslim Brotherhood have always won, even though they're not normally allowed to hold or take power um, for long. So uh, the other Arab countries, um, are they, they fear this because this would be the end of, of them. Uh, the, these other uh, countries um, regard the Muslim Brotherhood and these other groups on Al Jazeera as, as terrorists. And, and they see Qatar's vision of the future as totally heretical. Um, so there can really be no, no meeting of minds. I mean, at, at its root, this is a dispute between the Sunni Arabs about what kind of government they want in future and whether they want to have some kind of Islamic democracy, which is what many Arabs want, or do they want to continue to have what they've had for the last uh, 50, 70 years? In other words, unelected, autocratic, repressive 
governments. Um, and this is the choice that is before the Arab public. Um, and um, many, many people think that Al Jazeera is, uh, is more attractive. Hugh Miles, good to have your thoughts. Thanks so much for joining us.